We're finishing uh, this series, uh, this converse, these uh, conversations that we've been having that we, we entitled, Now What? Of course, you know that it was born out of seven people being baptized on a Sunday morning. Yes, 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 yes. Very good, very good, very good. Uh, and, and so we, we, we spent some weeks talking about, like, is there room in the economy of God for your humanity? Right? And there is. Right? And, and we, we talked about knowing your enemy, that you're not fighting with your uh, mother-in-law, gentlemen. Uh, you're not fighting with her or your wife or whoever it is. We have a spiritual enemy, church. Amen? Amen. And, and we need to know who he is and what his tactics are if we're going to be victorious. Last week, we talked about standing firm and standing out. There's a way to do it. The people you see on social media, that's not the right way. Right? It's not the right way. And this week, we're ending this by simply speaking about praying. Just pray. Uh, relationships are funny uh, because uh, you have to talk to people. You do. Right? I, I have friends. I, I have a dear friend of mine that uh, he, he's kind of socially awkward in a way that he just really doesn't like to talk to people. Right? And so if you... If he sees me at Walmart, he'll make an exception. But basically anybody else, if he sees him coming down the aisle, yeah, he's going down a different one. All because I don't want to talk to him, right? I don't want to talk to him. That sounds crazy to me because I'll talk to the wall if it talks back, right? Uh, uh, but, but relationships are funny because you have to have a conversation. You have to have a relationship. You can't have a relationship without without speaking and engaging in conversation. I mean, we all know that relationships are hard, right? It takes patience and forgiveness and understanding, all that stuff. But before that even happens, it just takes speaking, right? It just takes speaking. And sometimes if you have a relationship with somebody, get this. Here's a big uh, light bulb mo moment for you. You might get the benefit of the doubt if you're acting like a jerk, you just might if you have a relationship. Michelle and I, you've, you've met my wife. I married up. Amen. Uh, you know, our, we're working on 26 years of marriage on May 1st. And uh, yeah, yeah, come on. It ain't, listen, it ain't been easy for me, right? It ain't been easy for me. And, and so uh, 26 years, right? 26 years. And, and, and our relationship, I mean, uh, it wasn't like, uh, it wasn't like a Hallmark movie where, you know, ah, you know, love at first sight. No, our, our, our relationship started by a conversation. It started by a conversation. And, and I'm thinking as I was preparing this, this week, I was thinking, you know, what was it that started? And I think it was like I saw her and I said, uh, are you from Tennessee? Because you are the only 10 I see. <laughs> Maybe it was that one. Um, <laughs> I, I, I could have said, uh, we need to rearrange the alphabet and put you and I together. Uh, is it hot in here? Is it just you? Uh, you must be tired because you've been running through my mind all day. But when I think about it, it must be, you must be a speeding ticket because you got fine written all over you. It's been hard for me. 26 years of marriage. Uh, actually, you know, in all fairness and in, in the spirit of transparency, it was simply, hey, you want to see my new tattoo? <laughs> okay, so on that, I've warned my, I've, starting early, I've warned my two young granddaughters, don't ever fall for that, <laughs> right? Don't ever fall for the want to see my new tattoo line. And so, uh, but yeah, that's, that's how it started, just talking. And from there, we've got 26, almost 26 years of marriage. Praying, praying. So if we're talking about now what? Praying, praying, praying. It's, it's simply just speaking to God. Just speaking, right? Uh, I mean, who in the house would say that, um, that there is power in prayer? If right by a raise of hands. Okay, yeah, there's power in prayer. It should be everybody. Uh, yeah, there's power in prayer. Raise them again. Who's, who thinks? Yeah? Okay. Uh, who would say this, since we know there's power in it, who would say that uh, I don't pray enough? 
Isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? That we think, we know that there's power in prayer, but yet, but yet more than two-thirds of you say, yeah, I don't, I don't think I do it as often as I should. That's so, so telling, right, church? That's so, so telling uh, that there is a problem. I mean, I've heard this so many times that uh, when there's a, a difficult circumstance or something happens, and I've heard people say, well, I guess all we can do now is pray. That says a lot, right? That says a lot. Like, we've run out of everything that we know to do. And now, now, at this moment, we are just forced to pray. Hmm. That sounds interesting to me. Paul writes this in uh, Ephesians 6. We've been in, we've been, I think we've, we've highlighted Ephesians 6 like all four weeks of this, of this message series. But he says in Ephesians 6 that we are to put the full armor of God on. We, we've got the, the belt of truth and the breastplate of righteousness and the shoes that are fitted with the gospel of peace and the shield of faith and the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit. And then he says in Ephesians 6, 18, he says this, and somebody finish that next word. And pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert always, he says, and keep on what? Keep on praying for all the Lord's people. I love how he says with all kinds of prayers and all kinds of prayers. Requests. I, I, that, that makes me feel good. Um, do you guys ever remember going like to church camp? Any kids or adults? I don't care. Kids, adults, church camp. Remember the big, uh, uh, where I went to church camp, we had what they called Vespers uh, in the evening. And that's when everybody was all nasty uh, and sweaty all day. And you went back to the dorm, you took a shower, and you put on some good clothes because God only likes people in dressy clothes. Uh, that's a lie. And, and, uh, but we, we kind of dressed up and we'd go, we'd go to church, right? We'd go to church and then we'd go to campfire uh, and that's where you would try to kiss all the girls. Uh, and, and so we'd come back from campfire, we would get in a big circle. Anybody ever pray holding hands? Uh, yeah. Uh, remember, like, remember, remember they'd say, hey, uh, if you don't want to pray, just squeeze the hand next to you. And like, and like an adult would start it and they would pray and they would sometimes pray just these eloquent prayers. That you could never match that. Matter of fact, I always thought, listen, if I was God, I would answer that one. I'd answer that one because it was asked good. I mean, there was words in there that I didn't know what it meant, but it sounded really good. And then there was just like, squeeze hand, 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 squeeze hand. And then there was like... Um, you know that kid that's a know-it-all? He would pray, of course. And sometimes, like, you try to outdo each other with prayers, right? Anybody ever done this? When you hear, when you hear a good one, right? You, you hear a good one, and, 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 and the guy's like, uh, or the girl or the lady, uh, they're like using scripture, uh, and, and they're, they're like a good pray person. Right? And, and, and they said, God, you said in your word, there is no weapon for it. And you're like, oh, wow, that's good. Wow, yeah. And then it's your turn, and you're like, uh, God, um, I know that you are Jehovah Nisan, uh, and you are good. You are good to the last drop. And your word is good because it melts in your mouth and not in your hands. And you're like a neighbor, like a good neighbor. You're always there. I watched way too much TV as a child. I think that we, uh, we make a lot of mistakes praying, church, believers, Christians, brothers and sisters. I think we, we make a lot of mistakes. And I think the first mistake we made, and we're not going to really talk about this today, but, but, but we're going to highlight them. Uh, uh, we pray for we pray for small stuff. Our prayers are always limited to small things. Small things, like keep us safe. Be with us. Do you realize that he never leaves you? 
How can he answer a prayer that he's already answered? You feel me? He never leaves you. You don't have to pray, God, be with me. He, de- he never leaves. Never leaves. We pray for small stuff. And then number two, I think that our prayers are just way too general. They're just too general. I think that general prayers don't move God to specific actions. Just my opinion. Martin Luther, the father of the Reformation. I don't know if you studied that, but maybe you should Google it, Wikipedia it, whatever you want to do. But Martin Luther is, listen, he's the guy that, that maybe started it all for us. He had a friend named Frederick Myconius in 1540. And this Myconius cat got sick and he was expected to die. And he wrote this eloquent farewell message to Luther. And Martin Luther replied this back to him. He said, I command you in the name of God to live because I still have need of you in the work of reforming the church. The Lord will never let me hear that you are dead, but will permit you to survive me. For this I am praying because I seek only to glorify the name of God. Now that's a prayer, isn't it? That's a prayer. Uh, 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 Myconius had already lost the ability to speak. He was on his deathbed, folks. And, 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 and Martin Luther prays this prayer. Turns out that Myconius would live six more years and he would outlive Luther by two months. It's pretty powerful, isn't it? Huh? Yeah. It's pretty powerful. Ephesians 3, 21 and 22, we hear these words. Now, to him, this is to God, that to him who is able to do immeasurably more. What is immeasurably more than you can ask or imagine? That's way out there, isn't it? That you can't even, you can't even think it. Who thinks they're a dreamer in the room? Let me see your hands. Dreamers, yeah. You, you can't even compare to what God can do. Not to him who is able to do immeasurably more than we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. We find out that God can do more than I can ask for or even imagine. Why am I not asking? Why am I not asking? James, the brother of Jesus, says in, in, in his book that's titled James, right? He says, you don't have because you don't ask. And I think to myself as a, as a man in my 50s, like, why don't I ask? I think that this life with Jesus is like, he's just going to give me what he thinks I need. And that is true to a certain extent. But I need to use my mouth, church. You need to use your mouth. And I'm not saying, don't, listen, don't put those words in my mouth. Stop it right now. You can't name it and claim it. Right? There's plenty of churches that are teaching that, that prosperity doctrine. I don't buy that. I can't just go to the Mercedes dealership and name it and claim it. I want that one because God says somebody's got to pay for it, right? That ain't going to be me. But I will tell you this. You will not get if you don't ask. It's a conversation, folks. Prayer is a conversation. Jesus says in John's gospel, he's quoted. It's, it, these are like red letter uh, verses. He says, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow. And if you go to the King James Version, right, which is the Bible that Jesus preached out of, right, it says, my sheep know my voice. How do, how do we know his voice if we don't talk? How do we do it? Let me explain this. I mean, I, I've heard this so many times as a pastor. I, I've heard like people say, you know, I just, don't, I just don't feel close to God. You praying? Well, no. Well, it's probably a pretty good reason for that. You see, you see, the four weeks ago, we had seven people get baptized. They came to faith in Jesus, and it was awesome. I remember when I was 
13 years old, and I made that decision in my life. I remember feeling the very same thing. I don't, I don't feel any different. I don't feel any different. And, I, and, and, and you have to understand this. Listen, when a person comes to faith in Christ, their eternity has been taken care of. The relationship, however, with King Jesus has only just begun. We've only, was that Helen ready? The Carpenters, oh, man, I score a zero on music trivia. Why was I thinking Helen Reddy? There's a blast from the past, though. Uh, we've only just begun. Right? See, your, your relationship with King Jesus, it's only just beginning. He's wiped away the sin in your life. He secured your spot in heaven in eternity with him and his father. But your relationship, folks, look at, all right, everybody eyes up. Listen, I'm trying to help you. It's just starting. Of course you don't feel close. It takes work. It takes work to build a relationship. Jesus says, my sheep know my voice, and they hear me, and I know them, and they follow. I can Michelle can call me on the phone, and I pick up, and I say, hello. And she says, hey. It's not like I go, hey, you ever have that conversation? You ever have that weird, you ever that weird, awkward moment where you get a call that, of a number that you don't have saved in your phone? And you're like, hey. But it's a, but it's like a, it's like a local area, it's like a 217 area code. And you, and, or here, it's, even, it's even better this way. You ever get a text from somebody and the way they're speaking, they obviously know you. And there's like a thread that's still there, but you don't have their name in your phone. And you have to go, hey, uh, yeah, last time my phone updated, I lost a lot of contacts. <laughs> Who am I speaking to? Yeah, you know what I'm saying, right? And, and, so, and so Michelle can call me, and I'm like, I don't say, hey, who is this? It's Michelle. And I'm like, uh, uh Michelle who? Right? No, no, I know because I know her voice. Matter of fact, I'll go even further. I can tell you what's happening in her life by just hello. It's like this. How you doing? Fine. How you doing? Fine. You feel me? There's a lot said there with nothing said at all, isn't there? How you doing? Fine. How you doing? Fine. I can tell you exactly she's not having a good day. Jesus says his sheep know his voice and they know him and he knows them and they follow. Here's my problem. Far too long, I haven't prayed like I should. I bought into this mentality that if it's God's will that we're searching for, then he's gonna do his will regardless of me. And I think that's from the enemy because he wants to hear my voice. He wants me to ask him for stuff. He wants to answer my request. And I tell you what, I, I, I'll, I'll go even a little farther with you. I have been more concerned about listening to other people tell me about Jesus. Podcasters, YouTubers, right? I have, a, I, have a, I have a favorites list with my, with my communicators of the gospel and I always listen to what they're saying. And, 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 but, but I will go so far as to let other people tell me about King Jesus rather than just go talk to him myself. It's like, oh, did you hear that? Did you hear that podcaster? Or did you hear that, that message? Wasn't that awesome, man? That was so amazing. But it was just some other guy telling me about King Jesus. And listen, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't want you to let me tell you about Jesus. I want you 
to find out for yourself. I want you to find out how awesome he is, how loving, how forgiving, how, oh, how patient he is. I can tell you, and some other pastor can tell me, or some other podcaster can tell me, but I won't know until I know. And the relationship won't start until it starts. I think about it this way as we close up here. I think about at my birth, if everybody just told me about my dad. Like when I was old enough to start having conversations, isn't it amazing that we beg our, uh, our little shorties to talk and walk and then we and then we just beg them to shut up and sit down but I mean I, I, I get old enough to 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 know uh sort of what's around me and I I know my mom and and they, people just tell me about my dad I see him I see him I see him getting in the truck and going to work and I and I see him coming home and I I see him doing these things but I never get to speak to him because everybody just tells me about my father Jason, your father is a really good man. Oh, he's a hard worker. Oh, he, 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 he provides. Uh, he can even build furniture, and he's got a Harley. He must be a king, right? And, and, and all, but, I, but I never get to speak to him. Do you think I'll ever have a relationship with him? Huh. No, it'll just be a story. And that's what I'm afraid of today. I'm afraid of that for me. I'm afraid of that for you. Is that we don't know King Jesus. Listen, it's easy to sit in the church. It's easy to sit in this room where everybody puts on uh, their fake smile and, and they tell you they're blessed because they walk in these doors and, and we're never really able to be honest with each other, right? It's easy to feel good and, and sing songs and, and, and sort of feel good about you. But listen, I'm, I want you to know that if you don't know Jesus, you don't know Jesus. And he's waiting for you. If you draw near to him, he will draw near to you. He's close to the broken heart. All those things are true. But you and me have a responsibility to start the conversation. Father, we love you. We thank you. We thank you for your word. We thank that you that you put it in our hearts. We thank you for, oh, we thank you so much for Jesus. We thank you that he endured everything as we do. And yet he didn't sin. And Father, you tell us in your word that he did that so he would be compassionate about our weakness and then because of that that we can that we can come to the throne of grace with confidence that we don't have to hide because of failure we lift you up father and we give you the glory we lift your son jesus up and we give him all the glory honor and praise